Uh, we have the, uh, to go to that just for a moment, we have the cameras in the, um, uh, pri the inside office and on the public entrance, there is not a panic button. And uh, no, no signs have yet been worked out about distress for the camera, I don't think so. So the panic button seems to make sense. It's a relatively inexpensive way of providing that, that closure to uh, security for staff. Um, but those are the three issues. Do you want to go keyless, number one? Number two, do you want to combine the public entrance door side with an ADA compliant door? Number three, do you want the panic button? If the answer is uh, yes to one or all three of those, then what I would anticipate we would do is come back with firm estimates to vote on. But we're looking for direction this evening. I'd say the chief and I are looking for direction this evening uh, from you. Comments? Sure. Um, my suggestion, and it's just a suggestion, is to, uh, is to uh, take a look at the, uh, if we did install the ADA compliant door, does that really make the building ADA compliant? And I don't know the answer to that question. So before taking that first step, I think we need to have an assessment of the overall building from an ADA compliance perspective. Otherwise, we'd be putting $3,000 out for nothing. Um, uh, the answer, at least in my opinion, to the keyless entry is yes. Um, and we can firm up the back office as soon as possible. Um, I think the, the front south side, as you put it, Mike, um, uh, would depend upon our decision on, on the door, obviously. Um, but I think moving to a keyless entry there is also advisable, and I would support the, the panic button as well. Um, all that being said, uh, we're kicking off budget season this today, actually, and uh, you know, we, we need to make sure that we are, are uh, very clear on how we're spending the dollars. And uh, so, uh, so a firmer estimate on, on price would be helpful. Any other comments? I, I agree essentially with Gerard. Uh, I think we should go forward with the installation of the locks. I don't think there would likely be a significant price savings by installing an ADR, ADA compliant door now as opposed to later. The locking mm -hmm. system can probably be um, removed from the current door to an ADA compliant door when the time comes. But I don't think we should allow the uh, ADA compliance issue to delay us any further on installing the locks that we, we first talked about back in January. And, and we should, but we should address that, address the ADA issue and the, um, and the cost of compliance promptly as well. Uh, question for our solicitor. Back to George's point about whether we, we become more compliant, less compliant, or are we opening ourselves to a broader non-compliance if we just put a door in and do nothing else? Are we opening up a Pandora's box if we take that step? And I believe we did have some litigation staring us in the face not too long ago regarding handicap accessibility. So I'm, I'm with Gerard in terms of sensitivity about making sure that putting the door in doesn't blossom into next steps and next steps and next steps. Yeah, to, to try and answer your question, Bob, the, the the door itself is a bit of a standalone. The structure itself is older. No one's talking, although I, I take to heart what Gerard just said about overall evaluation, uh, uh, evaluating the whole thing for ADA compliance, because that, that would involve some, some uh, really difficult um, analysis and decisions. We do a little bit of a luxury, I think, not luxury, but a little bit of simplicity, because that is the one public door which immediately then goes into a hallway, left to council, right to administrative offices. That's the borough. So it's not as though we have a structure with uh, three floors that's uh, 100 years old and we've got stairs and we don't have an elevator and things like that. It's relatively straightforward from the ADA standpoint. And it's for that reason that the chief's uh, uh, suggestion with the locksmith was brought forward tonight. Because the right turn takes you immediately to the uh, borough secretary and the left to borough council in a wheelchair. So that's pretty straightforward. And I, again, I take to heart the uh, ADA issues on compliance. I'm not sure that uh, it's advisable, unless you want to, to undertake a complete ADA evaluation of the buildings. So we're not suggesting that. We're suggesting only the access. Right. Well, I have two questions that um, I'd like to ask about that. Is that. Well, first, we do need to know whether the entrance would be ADA compliant in terms of getting into that door, and we would need to know that before we do it. But in terms of the door lock, uh, it would be a good idea to know whether, in fact, if we put in a keyless entry lock on that front door and then later decided to put in the ADA door, whether the lock would in fact transfer over. So I'm assuming that the ADA door has the push button that opens itself Correct, yes. and whether that's integral in part with a, a door lock or not and whether the same door lock could be used would be a question to ask. 
I think, uh, not to take up too much time with us this evening, that, that we have some guidance, Chief, uh, to go back with. And um, uh, I take it, though, just to do straw poll here, that the panic button is something everyone conceptually favors here. All right, and we'll get some estimates on that. The Chief's already alluded to some numbers. And uh, then perhaps we can talk about this at the September work session. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Brought up the budget, sir. Can I get matching funds for this from the borough in the new budget? <laughs> <laughs> we'll look into it, Chief. <laughs>